Okay, well, we've introduced the new uh, fluid property viscosity, so we need to take a, a quick look at the significance of the viscosity. <coughs> okay, and you should interpret the, um, the description here um, against the diagram at the top of page uh, four, which illustrates a couple of uh, streamlines, illustrating a change in the uh, velocity of flow as you move sideways across a channel, or it might be as you move radially across a uh, circular pipe. The significance of the fluid's viscosity is that it relates the shear stresses to the rate of change of, of speed with distance. So it's a dc dy as uh, written in the in the notes. Rate of change of speed um, with position across the duct. Notice that we're interested here in the variation of velocity uh, sideways, perpendicular to the uh, direction of flow. So mu, the fluid viscosity is the constant of proportionality that relates uh, the velocity, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <coughs> Rate of change of velocity uh, with position to the shear stress. It's the shear stress that actually uh, manifests the, uh, the effect of friction, but we describe it in terms of the viscosity of the fluid. So as a constant of proportionality, the higher the value of the viscosity mu, then the more significant the shear stresses are, other things being equal. Mu is actually uh, the symbol we use for a particular kind of uh, viscosity called the dynamic viscosity, and we'll shortly meet uh, an alternative way of uh, representing that. So a couple of examples of high and low viscosity fluids. In a practical sense, it's quite useful to uh, be aware of the fact that viscosity varies very significantly, usually, with increase in temperature. You may have observed this in sort of practical ways. Um, things like oils become much less viscous when, uh, when they're running hot in an engine, for instance. That's why oil pressure tends to drop in engines once they warm up and the oil temperature rises. Okay, so introducing now the other way of uh, describing or uh, evaluating viscosity, the alternative Viscosity is called the kinematic viscosity, and it's very simply related to the dynamic viscosity. So kinematic viscosity is just mu, the dynamic viscosity, divided by the density. That gives us, incidentally, two equivalent ways of evaluating the Reynolds number. We can write it either in terms of the dynamic viscosity or in terms of the kinematic viscosity as you see there. Be aware of this distinction between the two because occasionally values are given in one form or the other. You can tell from the uh, units incidentally, the units of dynamic viscosity are pascal seconds, the units of kinematic viscosity are square meters per second. It always used to be said that it was very easy to remember the units of kinematic viscosity because you could alternatively <coughs> express kinematic viscosity as so many acres per annum, which is arguably a memorable uh, pair of units. However, as always, I prefer the use of SI units.
Okay, now uh, we're going to move on to the analysis of uh, laminar flow. So we're now looking at page six uh, on the handout. <clears throat> okay, and as I indicated before, one of the things uh, noteworthy about laminar flow is that because it um, is a simple physical situation, uh, it lends itself to quite simple and analytical uh, methods of analysis. And in fact, uh, the analysis of laminar flow in order to discover, first of all, velocity profile, then uh, flow rates, then pressure drops, um, is in the nature of a set piece of analysis because it, it draws on um, really quite classic methods uh, of, of analyzing the problem. So uh, we'll go through the outline of the analysis here. I'm definitely not going to go through every uh, step of the, uh, of the derivations. Uh, that really is uh, better left as an exercise uh, to the student. But we'll just look at the approach, the outline uh, methods. So, again, very, very much a classical approach. We start by considering an element uh, of fluid uh, within uh, a pipe. So what we're looking at here, the walls of the pipe here, center line of the pipe, the dotted line, and we think about an element of the fluid uh, in, that, in that pipe. We need a few definitions of the dimensions of the element and the pipe. And we need to think about the forces acting on the element of fluid, and by doing that, we can write down the equations of motion that govern that particular situation, that tell us uh, how the forces arising from pressure drop and shear stress must be related. Cutting to the chase, this is the result that we get. And the, the chase is more classical uh, analysis involving solving a differential equation by integration. Those of you who like that sort of thing, I invite you to work your way through the derivation uh, so that you can appreciate how it works. Anyway, for those of you uh, who do not care much for integration, Here's what happens when you get somebody else to do the integration for you. Uh, this is a, an equation that gives you the velocity C as a function of the radial position within the pipe. Okay, so R here, lowercase r, represents the uh, uh, radial position across the pipe, zero at the center and capital R at the wall and the velocity varies as a function, and as you can see, a quadratic function uh, of the radius. When you plot that uh, equation, then it gives rise to the well-known parabolic velocity profile for uh, laminar flow. In keeping with what I said earlier, you can notice from the graph that the velocity at the wall of the pipe is zero, and the velocity rises to a maximum uh, along the center line. <coughs> 